How's it going YouTube and welcome to a new episode of First Timers. Now in today's video we're going to be working on my 1969 Dodge Charger um, and specifically we're actually going to be working on the trunk floor pan of my car. We're going to actually be removing the whole thing so I am very excited. Before I get into that let me actually just tell you a little bit about the car. Um, again the car has been in my family for a long time so no I didn't just go out and buy a Charger because Fast and the Furious was out. Um, this has actually been been in the family for a long time. Um, it is actually the dream car for me to be able to actually just drive it around and enjoy it. I know a lot of people love their Ferraris, Lambos, and all that stuff, but this is one of those cars that's kind of like you know the bad boy car to own. Um, it is the um, you know from the movie Bullet. You know the Charger was like that brand of just like hey we are we are cool we are the guys you know even though. Um, we'll say it ended its demise in that movie in a poor way. Um, it was still a, a remarkable car um, through the years. And again, for me, um, you know, I, I don't want to say I'm going to do a full on proper restoration on the car, but it's just going to be one of those things that I do want to actually go through the car and do a lot of the things properly and um, have it ready for what I want to do. And that's pretty much get it to a drag strip and try to get into the nine second range and maybe my delusional idea of maybe getting into the eight second area. Um, again, I still want to try to make sure I have a lot of the steel on it, but again, I know I'm going to have to probably um, run some fiberglass fenders. You know, I already have a fiberglass hood, um, drop some weight in certain areas. So I, like I said, I do understand that, but again, I still want to make sure that hey, if I take it out, I could drive it it's drivable, it's gonna be a fun car. So, you know, if you guys do have any tips or tricks, um, engine builds, specs that you guys might be able to recommend, um, definitely throw them in the comments. I would love to see them so I can try to figure out what I'm gonna be doing and how I'm gonna do it. Um, so I only have to do it maybe twice or three times versus, you know, 20, 30 times. <laughs> but I understand, you know, going when you go out racing, you know, doing a specific build is just one of those things that you kind of have to go, okay, this is how I'm going to do it and all that good stuff. But anyway, getting back to the, uh, to the trunk pan, um, the idea is we're going to, you know, in the beginning of this video, you're going to see me start off with actually, again, making another delusional idea of just maybe cutting out the center section of the trunk. Um, I did find more rust, so by the third day we end up pretty much just clearing out pretty much the whole uh, section except the actual trunk extensions. Um, so pretty much, uh, like I said, it is very interesting. We did use a cutoff wheel and air chisel. I know um, to do the job properly for a lot of people, um, and I do quotes because um, I, everybody uses those, um, those uh, what's it called, those little uh, spot weld removers. Uh, drill bits so you pretty much uh, drill on spot weld and it'll just do the outside circle leave the welded portion in the center and pretty much they'll start to pop off for me since i'm not trying to save this panel the idea was to pretty much use an air chisel come right through it break the welds apart again you have to cut off with the cutoff wheel small section so you can start to bend the metal get to the next portion continue to air chisel and get it out so we'll kind of you know show you kind of like a quick video of how we did it um, it's not going to be too long, but it's just one of those things I did want to, you know, let you guys see how we did it. Again, not a how-to, but just how we did it. And there's a lot of great videos, so you, um, I'll put them up in the upper left-hand corner if you guys want to go and see those as well and how other people do their B-bodies uh, floor pan or trunk pan. Anyway, guys, let's jump into it. So as we get started here, we uh, pretty much uh, cut out the center section of the actual trunk. Now, keep in mind, we already did remove the gas uh, gas tank so if you want to go check out that video it'll be up in the upper right hand corner now if you notice the steel is pretty thin already so it flexes pretty simple or pretty easy by just barely touching it so just make sure that you're not hitting any of the braces or frame rails on, on the underside of your vehicle um, so just make sure that you cut around uh, main reason we're again cutting that rectangular piece out is so um, he can actually come up through the center um, so it can kind of work a little easier when he's a little deeper in on the trunk here now as he's cutting around again he's taking his time or right, i sped up this little section just because you know i didn't want you guys to get bored of watching us just like cut uh cut the trunk out but again just take your time in that section there now also on the upper portion where he's cutting here um at the uh where the uh, wheel axle uh 
uh, slope is, or the starter slope, there are braces back there. So you wanna make sure you don't cut those braces. Those are what hold up your uh, fuel tank. Now you're gonna wanna probably most likely reuse those. So just make sure that you're just not destroying them. Now you can kind of see where we stopped for the day. It's not too bad, but there are, you know, there are a lot of soft spots. So I did order a two piece uh, trunk pan to put in there. So, you know, the next day it just made it a little easier for us to go, okay, we're just gonna take everything out and cut it out. So I started removing the tail, uh, the tail lights just to give us more room. And um, I do leave the, uh, the tail light panel in there just so we're not, uh, you know, like I said, uh, we're not uh, having to fight if things are equal all the way across the board. Um, but as you notice, there are only eight uh, nuts that hold the tail lights in, so they're very easy to remove. And make sure you don't damage the foam as well. Now, I do also remove the bumper here in a second, uh, just because, again, it's in the way. Um, I need to get to the lower valance on the rear. Um, I did already cut the lower valance out at one point in time, and I just screwed the actual valance in. And I'll kind of showcase that to you guys in a second. I'll show you the screws that I used to hold it in there. It is, I held them in with, uh, I call them zip screws. You can buy them at Home Depot. And you can, yeah, it's like tap screws. Oh, tap screws, screws, yeah. So, but yeah, tap screws. Um, but I usually just drill them in to hold the pieces in place and then I can weld around them. But I didn't want to weld it in just yet, just because I have a piece that I need to fix before I can actually weld it and make it look good. So, just got a couple more of these. So as we continue here, you can kind of see that uh, we're still using a lot of the cutoff wheel. On the other side, uh, where we finished the passenger side first, we did use the uh, uh, air chisel and the cutoff wheel. But right now, um, I will kind of show you more in detail on how we use the air chisel and how we got the uh, next section off before the little extension here. Now, Hero is making kind of like, yeah, I want to kind of say like a scribe line first with the, uh, with the uh, cutoff wheel first. So he's kind of just making a quick line here and the line is going all the way through to the other side but you have to make sure that again you're not cutting the actual the actual frame rail so when he gets close to the frame rail he just tries to do it as light as possible um, so he's not damaging that frame rail um, like i said if you cut it just a hair that's okay you can always come back over and fill it with metal if it if, you know if you want to kind of fill it or you can just grind it down a little bit and make it go away um, that way but again i try not to take off too much metal off of any of the frame rails now again here we're using a air chisel and we are pretty much uh, just chiseling out the spot welds and Hero's kind of uh, prying on it just a little bit just to kind of give him a little more visibility. Um, so as he's doing each section, he could just sit there and air chisel and even if he goes through the top part, that's okay. We can always use the air chisel to kind of cut around a weld if the weld is being too stubborn. But again, like I said, he's just literally air chisel you know, and making, uh, you know, breaking the welds and going through. Um, he does have to use kind of like a, I don't want to call it a breaker bar, but um, he does use a, you know, like we'll say a breaker bar or a leverage bar just so he can actually kind of, um, or actually in this case, a tire iron. Um, so he can actually lift the metal out of the way and um, actually get to the next uh, sections here. So you can kind of see as he keeps prying, it is getting looser and looser each time. So he just pretty much takes his time and breaks the welds every single time. So again, like I said, this is a time consuming process. Um, it does take a little bit of time, but I still feel it's faster than using the uh, spot weld remover tool. But overall, like I said, I just, uh, I, you know, I like how quick it is and how fast it is. And I am very, 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 very excited on, um, you know, how this turn, you know, how this all turned out. Now, again, like I said, in this video, we're not going to really talk about how we prepped it. Um, that'll be the next video. So you guys can kind of see that, but I just didn't want to overwhelm anybody that was going to watch this because this video could easily turn into, you know, an hour and a half video of just watching every single uh, scene and you might not need to be able to see all of it at the same time. But again, like I said, we just got to keep working that air chisel and the cutoff wheel. And again, that little section that we did there was about 45 minutes. You could probably do a whole trunk in about, um, I'd say eight hours if you did it this, this way. Um, I've seen other people that use the, um, the actual drill, drill bit method. And you know, they, again, they're taking, you know, they're taking a long time to do it. You know, some people say it's, you know, to do it right it takes about three days. I do believe it, you know, all the bits that you uh, kill during the whole process. Um, again, it's just time consuming. Um, you know, I don't want to say the more time you take on a job, the better it turns out. But again, if you're taking your time and you're doing it right, uh, again, it'll turn out very nice. 
Um, as you're seeing me on the inside, Hero had to take off. I did finish removing uh, the welds up front where it meets the uh, floor um, over the actual axle. Uh, so pretty much I did all those uh, with the actual um, air chisel and it's hard to see. Um, but as I'm coming through here, you can kind of see where the air chisel kind of comes through the metal there. Um, it's just like I said, just take your time. You want to make sure you don't mess up the frame rails. You're just trying to break the spot welds. That is the goal. Um, but like I said, overall, um, I'm not probably going to use a lot of those parts there, but I did want to make sure that I had them in its own place. That's why I didn't cut around those. So I just want to make sure that if I wanted to match them up and use all the tire, uh, holding parts, I can reuse them. But anyway, guys, um, you can kind of see how it looks. Um, we'll do another video so you guys can, um, you know, see how we treat it and then how we weld in the trunk. Um, like I said, it turns out amazing. I like it and I'm loving it, but, uh, yeah, stay tuned for more videos. Anyway, guys, see you later. Peace and smash that like.